The punishment resumes. Um, <laughs> we have a moved and seconded and mucked around with thing, which, what are we doing now? We are moving that the, you know, receive the information and the governing body receive staff advice. Councillor Hills and oh. Councillor Dalton have moved an amendment by way of addition. Okay, there's a movement of amendment, addition, which is in the attempt to try and finish with a rubbish bin. High use playgrounds, high use parks, reserve extra left handed dog walkers. Kia <laughs> <laughs> I'll just briefly speak to it if that's okay. Um, the original I sent through was a bit stronger than that, but I'm happy to have taken staff advice to slightly change it to receiving advice. Look, the issue here um, for me is this was, and it's not Claudia's fault, and it's not um, the previous CEO's fault. We had $325 million to save um, very quickly in December 2022, and this was um, one of the long list of CEO delegated savings that did not get consulted on. And then I think the advice at the time was it was a minor uh, service change and it wasn't going to have much effect. I personally believe that it has been uh, had more effect than we expected and there is some nuance to it that I believe that staff, in my opinion, and it may not be theirs because they can't often tell us their opinion, but I feel staff are hamstrung by the $1.4 million of savings that they can't slightly tweak that to bring back some bins in some areas um, where they believe there's issues. There's clearly issues. We're all being sent bins overflowing uh, every weekend, uh, all the time. Councillor Williamson had you know, issues. If a bin is genuinely not being emptied and there's proof of that, great. If a bin is down, you know, I've had examples of bin a mile away down the track that you know maybe shouldn't be there um, and there should be one at the top and it's easier for the contractors. There's clearly an issue. I think we're spending a lot of staff time on this if we could just put a line in the sand, maybe get a little bit of budget back to get some uh, bins back in high use areas to ensure that the transition for this is better and, and spending on litter is not happening. This Thank is you not for that. Um, Baron Thank you. Henderson, do you want to talk to this as well? And then Dalton, and then we're going to put the damn thing. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Sorry to keep everyone from lunch. I'll try and be as quick and brief as I can. Um, yeah, just a couple of things that I think do need mentioning, and one of them is just to thank staff firstly for the offer to work on these issues that we've raised today. That's really good. Um, just want to talk all Councillor Fully actually in her, her question. Staff, at the end of the day, implement what we tell them to do, right? We can't, we shouldn't really lose sight of that. And when we pass savings at budget time, this is what happens. When we talk about cuts, these are the cuts. These are cuts that sometimes residents don't like. And that's something that we've got to think about in the future. Um, I was actually very thankful to receive uh, the information just out of the blue uh, from a resident stating the numbers per local board proposed to be removed. Um, Henderson Massey proposed to lose 52% of their bins. The next highest is 40%. The lowest local board only loses around 20. And it's not like Henderson Massey had heaps before. They had a normal amount. It's the eco city, right? After, after the proposal, Henderson Massey will have one bin per 545 people. For a couple of city suburbs, uh, suburban boards, uh, it was one in 200 after this. It's a huge gap, you know? And today we were told that it was easier because West Auckland bins were older than all the other ones, right? That to me is a maintenance issue. Not only do we lose the bins, it's a consequence of council decisions to not renew them as much as the other city, other parts of the city. It's not the community's problem that they weren't maintained, and they're the ones getting the consequence. It's a criteria as well that has nothing to do with demand at all. It's not the demand of, of where people need to put their rubbish and whether they actually need the bin, it's because they're older. Right? It's pretty much saying that it's easier to do it in West Auckland. I'll tell you, West Aucklanders are contacting me about this all the time, and they're a bit sick of being treated like this. The community notice when they're being shortchanged by the city. Local boards shouldn't have to step in either. It's a regional issue. 
I just want to thank the local board and, and conclusion for their leadership on this. They've been very strong in the advocacy in the community, doing a fantastic job. And I just want to shout out to them for that. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Those old bins must have trained them. Um, Councillor Dalton. Thank you. I'd just like to pick up on what the, um, Phil, our CEO, said around the decisions that we're making in policy, actually, because when we're making the regional decisions and when it's aligning with a policy or you know, a decision that was made, how do we bring the local boards along with us? The, the, the two local boards that um, I represent, well, are funding the retention of the bins out of the LDI, and that's like between fifty and sixty thousand dollars. They shouldn't have to do that. That's not the way that it should happen. There's two reasons. One is it's actually undermining a regional outcome. They have their autonomy, but does that get us closer to where we need to be? So there's a few things in here, right? There is our commitment to reducing waste. There is our commitment to finding savings. And we need to be able to have those good, robust conversations with our local boards to be able to say, we need you alongside us with this if we're going to achieve those two things at least. I understand rubbish bins are probably required in town centres. You know, people are walking down the main street and they've got litter. Not so much on a walk Dot poo, poo bags that Councillor Williamson talks about and people are frustrated with that. But actually, I agree with the Mayor, people, can, people should take their rubbish home. How much rubbish can you take on a walk around the park? Why can't you take your dog poo home? There's no reason for that and this is part of a transition. This recommendation I'm hoping will help that transition for community and will also help the local boards so they don't have to use their LDI because the Manurewa local board is the poorest funded board in the city and they've got plenty of other things that they need to fund, not the retention of their bins because they haven't had an opportunity to have a, a good look at them. I don't know what happened in that process because I've had that information for a long time. I thought that Grant Gillen made a good point when he spoke about Kauri Glen Reserve the other day, actually, and he said when they with their decision-making, they decided to leave the bins at the entrance points and exit points, and therefore they could reduce the bins on the inside, and as I said, within the tracks. And as I said, I think town centres should be handled a little differently as well, because we do get a lot of litter in the town centres. So that's the, that's the intention is to just try and take a little bit of heat out of it while we, we, we transition community and local boards and get to an outcome that's going to suit everybody. But the broader discussion, the broader discussion is policy implementation and not having all of us working together to deliver on that. Because as soon as we make decisions on cost savings, <laughs> and then local boards decide to fund and therefore impacting their LDI, which could be used on other things, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with that. Thank you. Councillor Newman, please. Thank you, Your Worship. I think this amendment um, speaks to a number of things. I appreciate that some people around here, I've, I've listened to, the questions, the comments this morning, I think that some people are really expressing a sense of stress on behalf of their respective community. I understand that. It's a consequence of the decisions that we take. Decisions that we take where we don't understand the consequences, where we don't necessarily communicate with the local boards affected. I mean, the local boards in my ward, Your Worship, I speak with them all the time. The reason why they've effectively had to do this because they are two of the local boards that have funded the retention of their bins, is for precisely this reason. Their judgment is that the bins in my ward are actually quite important and they want to take the extra time. Good on them for doing it. Why are they having to do that? Well, they're having to do that because we've made a decision and we're trying to deal with the consequences of that. The boards are taking a precautionary approach and good on them for doing so. Your Worship, you made the comment before the break, and I actually want to, perhaps a bit naughty of me to put you on the spot, you made the comment before the break that Aucklanders are 
can avail themselves of the benefits of their weekly rubbish collection service available um, at home, uh, for which the council will collect and take away their rubbish each week. I agree. But my question, Your Worship, is that would you like to see that service retained? Because the real question, Your Worship, is that, uh, Councillor Henderson, you're right. Your constituents are suffering. But here's another situation which you and I and everybody else from this table who cares to listen to it are going to have to debate very shortly. The proposal where 100% of Auckland households, 100% of Auckland households are potentially up for a 50% cut in their household rubbish collection service if you move from weekly to fortnightly. And I'm really looking forward to that debate. I'm really going to take note of who says what. I tell you what, Your Worship, Aucklanders, if you think Aucklanders are panicked by public bins in local parks going, just wait till 100% of Auckland households discover that they're up for a 50% reduction in their collection, household rubbish collection service. Anyway, Your Worship, I'm sure that this resolution will be of some use because I think it's important to understand the consequences of this. But be aware, Your Worship, that some of those local boards have already taken measures to ensure that this can happen by <coughs> voting to fund on a temporary basis that service, their, uh, their, their, their public bins, and maybe they were right and we were wrong. Thank you. Thanks for that. No, I didn't invent the idea of double of every two weeks either, so I'm not guilty there. We'll wait and see. Councillor Philippina, please add your lot to this lot, and then we might get on with the day after we've got Derby and Lee to finish. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I really just wanted to see if the mover and seconder would um, just add this to the substantive recommendation. So that's my question to yourself and the Deputy Mayor. Chair? I'm happy. Okay, just okay. do it. Thank you. Um, I don't wish to speak of what he's spoken to. Um, the Chair at Margaret Otahu and things are in place there already. Thank you. Right, Councillor Lee. Good, mo good morning, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Um, good morning, Councillors. Um, I always understood local government to be about rates, roads, and rubbish, and um, that may be wrong, but that's that is the general understanding, and why we are a council and why we are enabled to rate people is a social contract. There is a quid pro quo implicit in the arrangement of Aucklanders paying rates to this worthy organisation and 7.5%, I believe, extra coming up, rates demands, landing and letter boxes. So I support um, this uh, motion, uh, but I would uh, ask the mover and seconder whether they would include a reference to local boards um, in the resolution, because that's their part of, of administering um, this council business. They have the local knowledge and expertise, and we should show um, some respect for that. In terms of respect, I think the motion will go some way to uh, balancing some of the um, thoughtless comments made during the previous discussion, uh, which I believe will be considered patronising and elitist, and certainly not non-democratic. We are told we need to imitate Japan and Korea from now on when it comes to rubbish bins. Now, I don't recall rubbish bins being, I wasn't familiar with 
the question of rubbish in Japan when I um, visit, visited there frequently in, in my time at sea. However, if we really are wanting to tell the people that we should copy Japan, try sleeping rough and doing all sorts of other unsavory things in the main streets of Tokyo. Try sleeping out in the Ginza and see how quickly you will be removed. So just think members should be careful what they say and how it appears to the public that we um, are meant to serve. And so um, I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, we have two problems, systemic problems, one feeding the other. One is a financial problem that uh, cutting services directly to ratepayers will not solve. And we have another problem that's systemic as well, and that's our reputational problem with Aucklanders. Rather than cutting what Aucklanders want us to cut, high salaries, consultants, squadrons of PR people and other overheads, we tend to cut services directly to the public. The public do not want that. We have to listen a little bit more closely and more respectfully to what the public feel are their needs because they pay us. We're meant to be public servants. So on that note, I will signal my support for uh, Councillor Hills and Councillor Dalton's amendment by way of addition. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Councillor Lee. I wasn't aware that picking up rubbish was so elitist. Um, but I, in that regard, I'm happy to be an elitist person who doesn't throw his rubbish around, but I'm also happy to be an ordinary person who doesn't throw his rubbish around. Councillor Darby. Thanks. Um, Look, I think people under 25 listening to this will be shaking their heads in disbelief because most of them have gone through schools in the last, last 15 years where they were, all the bins were taken out in schools. Um, Thank you, Councillor Dab. And um, But look, um, you know, look, it's a day for the plus 25-year-olds, I guess. Um, just, um, can I just, my question is, I'm not expecting this, uh, supporting this motion to trigger a full-blown report. I think this is like reporting back by way of memo from the Chief Executive. Is that the expectation? Because I, I don't, I don't see value in a full-blown $10,000 report being worked up uh, in response to this. Is that the chief executive's um, expectation that it, it's um, information by way, way of memo? We will. Um, I think it probably is a little bit more than that. Um, if only to observe that if we pull back on aspects of the program, then there'll be cost implications that you need to be made aware of. So uh, I think maybe um, we'll look for something that's pretty quick and efficient and not too onerous in terms of um, resources, but I think actually we need to come back with some solutions uh, to get this kind of reset that I sense the room is overall looking for. And if there are cost implications, then my motto going forward will be let's be really transparent and clear about what that is and uh, where the trade-offs are. Thank you, Chief Executive. We'll have a quick report, not a quick and dirty report um, on this. Um, I, would, would, the, would Hills and Dalton be prepared to just amalgamate this into the rest of the thing rather than... OK, in which case, if you just nod, we'll put it the whole thing. Well, I think we've debated it now. We can just vote on, vote right, on we'll it. Vote on the, the, the other thing, I did have local boards originally in there and then through all the staff changes it was taken out, so I don't know how you want to incorporate that back into Council of I'm Lee. sure we'll talk to local boards. All those in favour of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. To the contrary, carried. All those in favour of the original one to receive the report, part A, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, carried. Thank you very much for that. Um, well, that was interesting. Substantive. <laughs> Well, apparently I have to put it together. For those of you that are unable to connect A and B, we're going to do A and B now together. For all those in favour of saying A and B, please say I and I. And I and I. And all those against it say A and A and A and A. And, and I think we've carried it. Thank you very much for that. Now, for something completely different, we're going to go to item nine, the recovery office update. And I'd welcome Matt Mason-Tanya. 
There's some good pro 